is our video on how to prep fish for our fish and chips. This is our 15 pound box that it comes in and a case has three of these. So um, depending upon the volume and the amount of fish you sell, you can determine whether you want to thaw one box or the entire case. Um, today for this purpose, we're just gonna thaw, we have thawed one box overnight in the cooler. And so um, our fish is ready to cut, it's thawed and ready for us to cut. The average size of a piece that comes out of the box. And our, our goal is to make as many portions as we, two ounce portions as we can. So I always place it on the scale real, so I see it's about 12 ounces. So I need to get about six pieces out of this piece. And you're always going to see that this end is thinner than this end. So this piece is thicker. So of course these pieces are going to look longer and um, bigger than these pieces are going to look depending upon how you cut them. Okay, so we're going to get ready to cut our fish now. And of course we have to use our safety glove. So I'm going to put a safety glove on and then I'm going to cover it with my um, latex glove you don't want it to get all and then I'm just going to put a latex glove on this hand the one that holding the knife okay now we're ready so you're always going to hold your knife at an angle so that you are it appears to be a nice longer piece than it looks appears bigger but it weighs around two ounces and I always think a nice size piece is this, the size of your hand so then we're gonna put it on here and see how close we came that's pretty close to a two ounce piece so same thing we're gonna do the same thing here cut it an angle if you look up here put it on your see your hand it's about the size of your hand and it weighs about two ounces okay so the pieces appear bigger because you're cutting them at an angle. And of course, remember, we're going to get about six pieces out of here. Again, that's a little less than two, but that's okay. So it's about the size of your hand. Again, three, four, five, six. And everything's at an angle. And again, about the size of your hand, the length of your hand, and about two pieces, two ounces. Okay, we're going to set up our breading station and um, we have our cut fish and then we have our Pride of the West all purpose batter, the flour, and it's just the flour. Our liquid egg mixture, of course, is going to be in the center and it's one to one. So if you use a 12 ounce container of liquid eggs, you would use a 12 ounce container of buttermilk. And that would be your liquid and you would just combine that until it's all mixed together. And then your third pan will be your panko. So we're going to um, batter and dip our fish. Okay, and then at the end of our line, after we have our panko, we'll have a sheet pan lined with our sheet pan paper. You will need about one of these pans for a 15 pound box of your fish. You can put um, the entire case on one sheet pan. After you line all of these with your breaded fish, you'd put another sheet down over it and layer another layer of fish and then another sheet and then your fish and then another sheet and then this will go, once it's full, will go in the freezer. So. You want to do is take your fish and you want to keep one for dry and one for liquids and so I kind of just flour a few pieces with the liquid or the the flour and put it into the liquid and when you put this um, pride of the west flour on your fish it helps the egg wash or egg wash and buttermilk 
mixture stick to your fish. Okay? So decide which one's dry. And then you put it in here, and I just did what I didn't want to do. Okay. So imagine you've just finished breading all of your 15 pounds or your 45, depending upon if you did a partial case or a full case. Any leftover flour or um, panko or egg wash would be disposed of. You would never want to put this back in the box or back in the bag because that would be cross-contamination and you would contaminate the rest of your fresh product. So anything that has had fish in or you're, that you've used always goes into the garbage when you're done. This is what it would look like and imagine that it was a whole 15 pounds. I would put another sheet over this and then line it again and continue the process till I had the entire 15 pounds on this pan. Then I would over wrap it with um, shrink wrap and put it in the freezer to freeze. All right, so we're gonna show you how to make the liquid batter that you are going to second dip your um, prepared fish pieces into when making a fish and chips or a fish taco. And the recipe calls for two parts water to one part um, Pride of the West batter. So I'm using the 12 ounce container, but, but you can use any, any container as long as it's two to one. So I'm gonna put two parts water, and you always put the water in the bowl first, and then um, one part of your Pride of the West. And you add that and whisk it together. Make sure you get all the lumps out. And did I say mention that it should be cold water? Never use hot water because then you'd be um, starting to cook the batter before you are actually using it. And it should end up to be a consistency of more of a crepe than a pancake batter because you're just going to use it as a light coating over the panko breading that you've already um, put on the fish. Just had a customer order of fish and chips. Looks like Christy would like a two piece today. So the front end prepared a styrofoam container with the four ounces of coleslaw that comes with that and um, so it is ready we have our um, of course set up to do our fish and chips and so it's very easy for us to come over here and get our one tartar and our lemon and set it in there now we're ready to um, batter fry our fish and we have our batter all ready to go and we take it over to the fryer and we set the fish down in the batter. This piece is kind of long, so I gotta flip it. We let some of it run out. And then you're gonna wanna set it in the oil and hold on to it. You can't drop it right away because if you do, um, it will sink to the bottom and it will stick to the fryer basket. So after you've held it for a while and part of that has cooked, it will float and you won't have that problem. Same thing with the next piece. Hold it up in the oil for a little bit. Let it start cooking off. And then you can let it go. And it'll float. So you set the timer for about seven minutes and get it going. Okay, so the fish has been cooking for about a minute and 15 seconds. You're gonna add the fries right to the same basket and we will let them cook. Okay, so our timer is going off and we are going to stop it. And we have got to check our fish and make sure that it is 
done and it temps out at 165 or above and we are good to go and it's nice and crispy and definitely temping so we can pull the basket up now okay we're gonna put our french fries um, into our basket top it with our two pieces of fish close it up 